Uh, Steve here from New Gamer Nation, and we're talking with Brad about Dungeon Defenders 2. And uh, we just got a chance to play the game. It looks great. Could you tell us a little bit about just the game in general and uh, what people can expect? Sure. So Dungeon Defenders 2 is a sequel to Dungeon Defenders 1, of course. And for us, we really want to take all of the elements that everyone loved in the first game and just take it to a whole new place. So we've added a lot more of the, you know, tight moment-to-moment -moment combat that we had in the first game. We've made that a lot sharper. We've added an entire new combo system that allows players to cooperate in entire new ways. Uh, so for example, you know, in the first game, you had your towers and your abilities, and they, they were really fun by themselves, but there was no synergies between what you did with one thing and the other thing. Now you actually can use those together. So for example, if you're a huntress and you throw an oil flask on someone and get them covered in oil, if something that's fire, like say the Apricus's fire tower, shoots something covered in oil, they light on fire and they burn and they, it's really, really cool looking. A lot of different ways that you can actually cooperate with your friends or the guys you're playing with. Right. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, and there's, um, I know, you know, we're playing the, uh, one of the stages here and there's four classes. Can you tell us a little bit about the classes and like the differences between the classes? Because I know. Sure, sure. So our Squire character is a little bit more of our tank. Uh, he has an ability called Provoke that makes him really, really tanky, doesn't take a lot of damage, had all the enemies attack him. You know, he's there to block lanes with his, block his barricades and really just take the damage. Uh, we have our Apprentice, who's one of our range damage dealers. It has an incredible AoE spell called the Banna Bomb. He can jump in and knock out an entire group of enemies in one shot. We have our Huntress, who's another one of our ranged characters, but she does a lot more of line attacks. So she has this piercing shot that's just this flaming phoenix that will just go right down a line of enemies, kill them all in a line. And then she has a lot of cool little traps that she can place. So instead of having towers, she has traps that she puts in lanes. They have charges, they do damage. And then we have our Monk, who is our support character. He has an AoE heal that he can do. Uh, he has a, a Chi Blast where he pushes enemies around, but it will also buff towers if it goes through that. And then he also has his auras. He has an aura that actually enhances other defenses around it. So if he puts it next to other defenses, they'll do more damage. If one of them dies, it'll hear the other, all the other defenses around it. So he's a really good support character to play. And this game is going to be uh, free to play, right? Oh yeah, we're going free to play. Yeah. What's the uh, what's the model? How are you guys making? If you don't mind me asking, how are you yeah. guys making the money? That's one of the most popular questions. To be honest, we're still working on a lot of our monetization oh, mechanics, no. but we we're firmly in the camp of no pay to win, yeah. and we really believe yeah. in in having players be excited about the things that they purchase, the equity right. they get. Another thing that we believe in is that, you know, when someone makes a purchasing decision, we really like the idea of that being something that benefits other people. So if you're going to buy something, or there's actions that you do with things that you paid for, maybe it has a bonus to other people that are in your game, or if you're a way to help everyone that's playing Dungeon Defenders 2, you know, we really want to create things that are positive when it comes to how you decide to spend money with our games. Right, right. Well, the game looks great. I know it's got to be getting close towards uh, completion. Do you, get, do you guys have just like a basic window, you think, of when... Uh, uh, I, and I know I had this a little I know, I know, everyone's anxious. So, I, I think okay. I heard that question like 20 times yeah. a day. No, it's oh. good. I mean, we have a, um, a very small group of our community playing the game right now. We call it our defense council. Mm -hmm. And one thing that we believe in is having our, our, our players really work with us developers to make the best game that we can. Oh, okay. So we have about 500 people in the defense council right now. They play usually once every week or so. Mm -hmm. They give us direct feedback. And we're looking at ways to allow other people into that as we go by. But really for us, our philosophy is we want to make sure the game is done. It's in a good state before we get it out there. We have the content that you guys expect. And we really have a, a good, solid, enriching experience. We think we're close, but we're not there yet. Yeah. So release date, and we have a game we're happy with. Yeah. But that's really cool that you're listening to the community and making changes and, and bettering your game off uh, the positive feedback you're getting from the players. So that's really cool. Well, you know, it's it's... You have, you have this whole trend right now in the industry where gamers actually want to participate in the conversation with developers. Right. You know, they're funding things on Kickstarter. Yes. They're participating in alphas in a very different way. And we want to do that in a whole different way. You know, we, we have our defense council, not only do they play the game every week, but they also, we have live streams with them where we answer their questions. We do meeting, actually, my marketing community team, they bring reports to me every week where we sit down and we go through all of their feedback very, very carefully. We have action items out of that. We actually have them vote
note on some of our decisions every once in a while. The Forge in the game, they actually had two different models that we had made. And it's like, which one do you guys like better? Right, the one right. do you guys like we're going to put in our game? So we're trying to find even new ways. Um, we're not talking about all the details of it yet. But we really want to have ways where the community can participate in how we create the game on a daily basis. And we're really excited about you know having you show us how to make the game that you love. Right, right. Well, that sounds really good, man. And the game looks great. So I, I look forward to seeing all the improvements that continue to make and yeah. especially when it's out you know i look forward to seeing the uh, final product Very thank you cool.